Shalom everyone. It is really wonderful to worship God, to praise Him in summer day. Okay, let us, we have here, uh, okay, prelude by Mary here. Yeah, yeah. 10 generation leaders will open our service with words from Romans chapter 4. Romans 4, 3 through 5 in English. What does scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. Amen. Same words in Korean. 성경이 무엇을 말하느냐? 아브라함이 하나님을 믿음에 그것이 그에게 의로 여겨진 바 되었느니라. 이러는 자에게는 그 삭시 은혜로 여기지지 아니하고 보수로 여겨지거니와 이를 아니할지라도 경건하지 아니한 자를 의롭다 하시는 일을 믿는 자에게는 그의 믿음을 의로 여기시나니. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gathering us before you. We have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Please, O oh God, your name be praised, honored, and O oh Lord, our Father, please come and touch our life. Your rest may come to us. Your strength, joy, and life revive us and all those who worship together with us throughout the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, please join me in invocation. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the dew and refresh. Convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to our great good and your greater glory. And this we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. 
please rise if you are able and let us sing praise uh, praise our God God whose purpose is to kindle uh, him Today's word is from Genesis 15, 1 through 6. Mary will lead us in response. Religion. Today's scripture is Genesis 15, 1 through 6. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me, since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. 
He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing him, You are our God. You are our God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says, We are saved through faith by God's grace. Salvation is by God's grace. At the same time, when we respond to God's offer, in faith, we are saved. 
there are uh, two kinds of uh, I mean, many people uh, think that they can be righteous by being perfect in moral morality or in behavior or in life and many people think they are righteous in that way but if we examine ourselves very honestly we know that we are never perfect there are so many wrongs we have committed so many sins we have committed we just have uh, depressed them because if we remember all our sins we cannot really remain sane we go crazy so we cannot be righteous through our perfect actions even though we need to strive to be right in that way yes there is the way to be righteous by through faith that's what today's passage shows us righteousness by being right with God through believing in God that's really remarkable way yes many people suffer when they try to be righteous through their own perfection and uh, that's actually self-righteousness because as bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god and the wages of sin is death so all those try to be righteous through moral perfection or through their willpower are bound to be cut off from God because they are never perfect and there are many sins hidden so God gave us the way to be righteous to be right with God through faith through believing in him who is righteousness itself today we learn from about that through the example of Abraham let us think about this this is really amazing the wonderful grace of God Verse 1 says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. After this means, after Abram scored a great victory against Kedolomer and his allied armies and rescued Lot, his nephew, and many were victims of Sodom, Gomorrah, and many people. Abraham really risked his life, risked all his estate, everything, in order to save these really innocent victims from really greedy people, the army of Kedalomer. What Abram did was so pleasing to God that Melchizedek, the king and the priest of Salem, 
the old name of Jerusalem, came and blessed Abram. Abram, you are blessed by God. May God bless you. Praise God who delivered your enemies into your hands. Abram became a legend in the life of faith. I mean, among people around that area, Abraham became a mighty man, true man of God. It was great spiritual achievement and victory. But after this, surprisingly, Abraham was suffering from fear and discouragement or spiritual blue. Yes, are you familiar with the term postpartum blue? Yeah, when a mother delivers a baby, I whose birth she has been waiting for so long. Everybody rejoices. Hey, congratulations. Hey, you have wonderful baby's born. Yeah, she is very happy at the time. But about 5% of mothers go through kind of a discouragement very depression, postpartum blue. Yes, people who used to pay a lot of attention to her now pay their attention to baby only. So when you have a chance to really visit mother and child, please pay attention, a lot of attention to mother. Too. Not just the baby, that's a very important thing. Yeah. <clears throat> In spiritual world, also there is a postpartum blue. After you really did something wonderful as a yeah, child of God, and everybody praises you. And you yourself know you, you did something wonderful to please God. Nonetheless, very often discouragement, discouragement, fear, uncertainty come upon you waves after waves. Oh my God, I have done something really great, risking everything. But where is my reward? That thinking visited Abraham. Even though he did something really wonderful for the Lord and for people, he did not have what he really wanted to have. He didn't have a son. His wife didn't become pregnant right away. No, they only got older and actually now they had this tremendous fear because they made powerful enemies, Kedulamel and his allied forces, in the process of serving God and rescuing people. Any time, any day, Kedulamel and his army could appear on the horizon like swarms of locusts was really great number of these cavalrymen. I'm just a... Abraham was so fearful. It seems that it was in the evening, dark. Maybe sunset syndrome, spiritual sunset syndrome <laughs> around this uh, dusk falls. And uh, you become very confused spiritually, you know. Or to say, I did something great. 
But what is my real life here? I only acquired much rubber. Yeah. How can we come out of this spiritual blue? Or how can we come out of spiritual wintry season? The key is word of God and vision. That's very important. Yes. The word of God came to Abram in a vision, says. Yes. Word of God came to Abram, but in the way of vision. What is a vision? Vision is one of the most widely abused word in these days. Yeah. Many people think their worldly dream is a vision. <laughs> yeah. I have a vision to retire, make a lot of money and retire at age 42, many people say. And when they, that dream is not realized, they become very discouraged. But vision in the Bible is not human desire. Vision in the Bible is a vision from God. It is rooted in God. And it cannot be broken. That's the real wonderful thing. Vision is this work of the Holy Spirit which transport you from your dark discouraging fearful situation to to the wonderful world of God fulfilling his promises vision of God transport you from this very very really difficult situation into house of God beautiful presence of God. So you are encouraged that vision really enables you to overcome what you see around the world. That's a very important thing. Yeah. Vision of God is beautiful. And this vision of God is different from some just uh, uh, some mysterious experience which is not based on the Bible. Nowadays there are many people who have this mysterious experience which have nothing to do with the Bible. Yeah, we, we should be very careful about that. All our spiritual experience should be founded on the Bible, Word of God. That's why the Bible says here, Word of God came to Abraham in a vision. Word of God, vision goes side by side. Yes. What did God say to Abraham? Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your very great reward. Do not be afraid, Abraham, because I am your shield. That means I am your protector. I protect you from enemies or harms. I protect you. And second is. I am your very great reward. Please pay attention to this. This is very important. Even though Abraham doesn't have any tangible reward in his hands, he doesn't, he cannot bounce a baby on his knees, anything. No. As a matter of fact, his wife and he, he are just getting older every day. All their cells are getting older every minute. But God says, I am your very great reward. 
This is very important. <laughs> Are you disappointed? Because even though you have served God so wholeheartedly, you do not have any tangible reward in your life. You do not have recognition from people. You do not have some reward in terms of finance or rank or privileges or many other things. God, please. Think whether God is speaking to you in silence. I am your very great reward. I am your very great reward. Your reward is already in me. You pleased me and you have reward. It will be shown to you in time. <coughs> this is very important thing. Yeah. God Himself is our reward. If we have pleased God, we used to be happy with that. And we used to be thankful to God. Even though we do not have anything in our hands. Hebrews says, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, It is impossible to please God without faith. For whoever comes to God should believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yeah? God exists means God is your protector. God is your rewarder. God exists. Actually, that's the meaning of the name of God. Jehovah or Yahweh, Jehovah. Yeah. God exists. And do you believe that you have great reward in God. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yes. May God bless you to know that you have great reward in Jesus Christ when, we, when you serve God, follow Him. What was Abraham's response to this God who came to him and spoke to him? To our surprise, Abraham spoke like an ungodly man. Yeah. He complained. He complained. What can you give me since I am childless? God, you have been promising me. That you promised that you will make me a great nation. You promised it. To my offspring, you will give this land to me. You talked about my offspring, my descendant. But what can you give me since I'm childless? Wow. We, we used to think that Abraham was a great man of God. It's true. But also, actually, he's very weak too. He goes up and down. Yeah. It's very interesting, yeah. And the Apostle Paul, to our very surprise, in Romans chapter 4, 3 to 5, he's calling this Abraham ungodly. That's right. It's an ungodly response, yeah. He didn't please God. What can you give me since I'm childless? And then he presented his own plan to God. I'm going to make my slave Eleazar from Damascus my heir. God, you have not given me a son. Okay. All right. I have my own plan. I'm going to make my slave my own heir. 
So if uh, I'm killed by cattle animal or armies, enemies, you know, at least Eliezer hmm, will bury me or something. Wow. Wow. Everyone was really <laughs> very, very, very low point. <laughs> it's very surprising after such a great success. He was very low point. But what is more surprising is the response of God. God didn't become furious with Abraham. How dare you? You speak like an ungodly. God didn't say that. Wow, how oh God is so wonderful. How oh God said, He just simply said, No, He will not. Be your heir. The offspring that comes from your body, you and Sarah, your wife, he, your blood and flesh, will be your heir. Brothers and sisters, why do you think? God insisted that offspring of Abraham and Sarah would be their heir. This is a very important thing. This, this is very amazing. I think Eliezer was very, very good, pious man of God, great ability. Many Bible scholars think that Eliezer of Damascus is Abraham's great servant mentioned in Genesis chapter 22. He was a very spiritual man, man of prayer, wisdom, great <coughs> man of mission. He was given the mission by Abraham to find the fine woman of God to be the bride of Isaac, Abraham's son. Among Relatives who were living far away. It was a very, very difficult task. It was a very difficult task, like finding a needle in a haystack. But she prayed, wisely found God's living, followed, and she impressively persuaded Rebecca and the family and brought her. Very great men of God indeed. But God said, no, 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 no. No, he will not be your heir. Your own offspring that will come from your body will be your heir. God says like that because his promise was from the first like that. Yeah. Well, before this time, even when while Abraham and Sarah were living in the Earl of Chaldeans, under their idolish being father terror, God promised, I'll make you into a great nation. Also, when Abraham and Sarah married, they became one. That family is very important. Eliezer didn't come from that family of God. No. To God, not just individual, but family is a very important thing. Yeah, very, very important thing. Yeah, yeah. Family is the unit of God's ministry. Yeah. So, anyway, yes. That's really amazing, yeah. And then, let's see. <clears throat> then God took Abraham outside and said, it was night. Yeah. Everything was dark. But in the sky, stars were shining. 
and Gaza Tebra, look up at the sky and count the stars. Can you count them? If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Wow, this God, our God is so beautiful. How nice. How forgiving. How gentle. How much he still bears our weakness and encouraging. It, it's just uh, amazing. We are reminded of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. He encouraged his apostles. Really. Cooking for them, restoring their failure, and showing his love to them to the end. Stars were shining all over in the sky of the ancient skies of Palestine. I once was traveling in the state of Utah at night and wow, in the wilderness so many stars shining almost. I felt that they were falling down on my head. Wow, it was just so incredible. So big too. One sh some sh shining in the right side, then bigger ones shining in the left side, still brighter ones shining over, far away in front, all over. How many stars are there? Billions. Billions of stars, billions of galaxies, and billions of stars in each galaxy, countless. The number of stars we can, normal ordinary person can count without telescope or other things. Number of Stars, ordinary people can count with naked eyes. Uh, about 600, some people say. Yeah. In my case, I could hardly count over 100. <laughs> I get tired. As Abraham was counting, God said, Can you count them? Your offspring shall be like that if you can count them. Lord, I cannot count them. Your offspring, so shall your offspring be, God said. And now Abram's response. Abram believed the Lord. He was a transformed man. He didn't do any action. He just believed the Lord, who is absolutely believable. I mean, if you believe something, someone who is absolutely believable, is it a great something? No. God is almighty, faithful, loving. He is absolutely believable. Believing in God, actually, you know, is something that should be done. Not believing the Lord deserves to be really yeah, punished. But believing the Lord is all to Natural thing, it should, be, it should be no credit, but God credited to him as righteousness. Wow, how generous our God is! 
Abraham believed the Lord and God credited to him as righteousness. God forgave all his ungodly words and scheming, planning, all those things. And God credited it to him as righteousness. God said, you are right with me because you believed in my promise. This is very important. This is really amazing. When you look at this whole thing, in his grace, God helped Abraham actually. <laughs> and Abraham believed in the law. And God credited to him as righteousness. Brothers and sisters, what does this mean to us? This means that even though we sinned, we spoke, acted like ungodly people so many times, when we believe that God sent His Son Jesus Christ on the cross to die for our sins, when we believe that God raised Him from the dead and He ascended into heaven and He will come back again, God credited it to us as righteousness. You believe in my son Jesus, you are right in me. That's what God said. This is really important thing, yeah. You are right. Jesus was absolutely innocent. He did not commit even one sin. Among all the people who ever lived in the world, Jesus is the only one who was without sin. Yes. And yet, God sent him to the cross so that he could die as a guilt offering for us. If we are treated as we deserve, we could have been killed because of our sins. In that case, we have no chance whatsoever. So God, because He loved us, God let His Son suffer in our place. At the same time, of course, Jesus could not remain under the power of sin forever. No. God raised him from the dead. God let him sit at the right hand of God, see the glory. How beautiful is it? How amazing is it? Oh my God, this is amazing. May God bless you with this faith in Jesus Christ. That will be like faith of Abraham for you. And God credited your faith as righteousness. This is very, very important thing. Yeah, very, very important thing. Yes. There are so many people who achieve many things in the world, but their relationship with God has not been restored. Then they lose everything. Yeah, with their death, they cannot bring anything. May God bless you. Even if you fail in other things, please believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that He died for your sins. And not only your sin, but sins of the world. And God raised Him from the dead. Jesus ascended in heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. He will come back to judge the living and the dead and restore God's kingdom on earth. Yes, that faith God credited 
as your righteousness and your relationship with God is, is restored. You are right to me, God says. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just amazed how gracious you are. You, how much you love us. Oh Lord, our God. Oh Lord, please help us so that we may, we may really lift our eyes and see you and believe in you and thank you. Oh Lord, our Father, O oh Lord, Father, we just praise your name. There is no one like you. Amen. Okay, let us sing him here. Yeah, let us sing. It's so wonderful, really. Just uh, sing praise to our God. Let us sing him here. Yes, Jesus paid it all. Yes, printed a copy. Yeah, in a separate sheet there. Yeah. Thank you. 
pray. Heavenly Father, what can we say? Is this the way you treat us? We are terribly sinful and ungodly, but you bore with all our sins, stench, and, O oh Lord, you sacrificed your Son, your only Son, Jesus, and your Son, Jesus, O oh Lord, fully obeyed you and died on the cross in his love for us and you washed our sins O oh Lord our Father O oh Lord we believe in you we entrust our lives to you we believe that you raised Jesus from the dead also we believe Jesus sitting at the right and of God. We believe that Jesus will come again to judge the living and dead and to establish your kingdom forever. So help us, O oh Lord, keeping this faith in you. We may work with you, being enabled by the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, being empowered by your grace and love. O oh Lord, our Father, we cry out to you. There are so many people whose suffering is beyond description. They suffer, cry, and are lost because they do not know this good news that God credit is our faith as righteousness because they do not know the gospel of Jesus so please accept our offering accept our prayer and the priest use us in sharing this gospel with many and saving them we offer our a sustainable revival worldwide mission convention, international shalom game, our missionary journey to Korea, India, Singapore, our all our evangelical journeys in USA, all our visiting our friends, our sharing Bible with people our sharing Hebrew and the Greek Bible studies with people and many labor of love. O oh Lord, have mercy on us, accept our offering and our heart. Bless them so that they may overflow to the salvation of many people. We praise your name. We honor your name. We just thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I ask you to pray for our uh, sustainable revival worldwide mission convention 2022-23. That's fourth. And that include international Shalom Games, also Christ-like Leadership Conference, and also this uh, this Mission Fest Eve uh, cultural performance. Yes, our Flint Church worldwide do this so that sustainable revival may spread to all the churches, individuals, communities in the world. Yeah, so please 
So uh, please pray that God may raise the people who carry this torch of international shalom games all over the world and then our Flint church people and mission friends all over the world may begin to play this shalom games <coughs> and uh, for God's glory and uh, so that God may also give them shalom of their spirit, shalom of their body, shalom of their minds, shalom of their church, shalom of their community, shalom of their nature and all for shalom, promotion. Yeah, please pray. I also want to ask you to pray for our here uh, evangelical journeys and uh, missionary journeys uh, in USA also in Korea, in India, in uh, Singapore, yes, our church uh, will have these journeys this month and next month, especially, please pray that God may grant us journey mercy, especially, please pray for me so that God may grant me, a, uh, renew my passport soon, and that God may enable me to visit this mission, uh, these countries, and uh, uh, really uh, uh, serve conferences, Bible studies, worship services, and also Hebrew, Greek, Bible research too, with many others. The Lord is doing wonderful things. Okay. Uh, let us pray. Let us pray. Yeah. Let me give you benediction. Our Father, O oh Lord, bless your people to believe that you love them and sent Jesus Christ for their forgiveness on the cross. And that you raise him from the dead for their justification and life. O oh Lord our Father, please be your people who spread this good news and share with this and embodies this message in their lives. Now grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all his people who share this good news with many others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.